Hey folks, Jeff Fryer, former Major League Baseball player and your certified hitting guru. Um, today we're going to talk about the hit and run. Now the hit and run is not used as much anymore. Um, apparently some people in the front offices think it's a low percentage play. And, um, and I think it's sad because uh, to me a properly executed hit and run is a beautiful thing. And I used to see it a lot more back when I played. But uh, oh well, the game's changing. Anyway. Um, if you have a coach or manager that you know still believes in the old school way and, and and likes to put on hit and runs, you need to learn how to do it properly. Okay, um, I used to look for the hit and run. I had a manager, Kevin Kennedy, uh, with the Red Sox, that uh, allowed me to put on my own hit and run. I would give a signal to whoever was on first base uh, at any point during the game. Um, and he would allow me to put on my own hit and run. I appreciate him trusting me, um, and it paid off. It worked quite often. It didn't always work, but a high percentage of the time it worked because I was a contact hitter, and I could put the ball in play unless it was a pitch out or a ball in the dirt or something. So um, I do appreciate that, Kevin. Um, but anyway, uh, for me, the hit and run was um, it was my bread and butter. It's why I stayed in the big leagues, I believe, uh, for just over nine years. Um, I couldn't wait to get on to get up with a runner on first base or first and second. I mean, I loved it because I hit a lot of ground balls, a lot of line drives. So if I'm hitting a ground ball in those situations, I'm a double play threat, and I don't want to hit into double plays. Um, so I figured I can hit the ball on the ground with the guy moving. Maybe I'll find the hole. Maybe get a rally going. So uh, there was a lot that went into it for me. I would um, I would watch the middle infielders before I even got up to play to the plate, I would um, see which guy was cheating towards second base with a right-handed hitter. Um, because sometimes it's not necessarily like it is in Little League when you have a right-handed batter, the second baseman always covers second. And when you have a left-handed batter, the shortstop always covers. Or sometimes the shortstop always covers in Little League. Um, but they switch it up in the major leagues. And me being a middle infielder, um, I would pay attention to the hitter, which type of hitter is coming up because um, if it's a right-handed hitter who can hit the ball the other way, I don't necessarily want to cover second base as a second baseman because I leave that whole right side exposed with the first baseman holding the runner on. So sometimes we would switch it up. So as a hitter, um, I would pay attention to that, see which guy is covering, um, which guy is cheating over. That way, when I came up, I had a plan on where I was going to attempt to hit the ball. Now, if I felt like the shortstop was going to cover the bag, um, I would try to pull it, okay? Even a fastball away, I would try to pull it on the ground, okay? The key to the hit and run is um, hitting the ball on the ground. You hit a line drive right at somebody, you got a double play, okay? I mean, unless you go yard, I have a couple times on hit and run, but it wasn't by design. I was definitely trying to hit the ball on the ground and generally through the right side because normally the second baseman is the one covering the bag on. He thinks it's a straight steal or something like that. So I pay attention to that stuff. I would also watch the pitchers um, to see the grip on their pitches, okay? Um, when they're warming up, they don't really uh, try to hide it. So a guy's warming up, and you see how he grabs the ball, he puts it in his glove, and he, and he motions a fastball, okay? So I knew the grip, if it was a two-seam or four-seam, or if he had a slider or a curveball, I would watch his grip. Sometimes a curveball, you see the knuckles. So I would be prepared as best I could when I step in that box and know what this guy has and what he might throw me in a hit and run situation, okay? And remember, the key is to hit the ball on the ground. If nothing else, you hit the ball on the ground, the guy gets the second, uh, you might be thrown out at first, but at least you advance a runner and uh, put pressure on the defense, which is another thing that's not, not doesn't seem like as um, important anymore in, in baseball. So anyway, for me, the hit and run, I would really normally try to stay inside the ball, try and hit the ball through the right side, the four hole between first and second, where they play normally. Um, and I mean, it worked a lot. It worked quite often for me. Um, but then again, if the pitch is inside, you gotta somehow fight it off or try and pull it. Just, you have to make contact. It's a pitch out, you gotta swing at it. Do anything you can. You know, sometimes they put a hit and run on because the runner on first is maybe not a, a very fast guy. A lot of times they put catchers, uh, don't take a personal catchers, but not many catchers are fast. You know, Pudge was fast, but not many guys are fast. So um, they call those guys base cloggers, you know? So they would put a hit and run on to try and get that guy going 
maybe we can get him to third base. Maybe we can, you know, we can manufacture a run somehow. So for me, pretty simple. Okay, I'm gonna stay back, and I also would move off the plate a little bit because 95% of the time I'm trying to hit the ball through the right side. So for me, moving off the plate made that pitch uh, inside a pitch that would be tough to handle made that easier for me to stay inside and hit it to the right side. Now I could always hit a pitch off the plate. I could always get out there if I had to, way out there, just try to make contact. So right here we're gonna demonstrate how you stay inside a pitch and hit it through the four hole, okay? Now, normally I would be standing right here, okay? But because it's a hit and run, I'm gonna move back off the box. I would also do this when there's a runner on second and I'm trying to hit a ground ball through the right side. Um, I, I wanted to eliminate that inside pitch. I wanted to make it uh, almost a pitch down the middle because I knew I could had plate coverage um, all the way outside. So here it is. My normal stance, I backed off a little. Now I'm just gonna try to hit this ball, hard line, ground ball or line drive through the right side. Okay. I got Scott Hatterberg on first. He's not a fast runner, but he's got the sign. He's a good baseball player. He's got the sign. So it's a hit and run. Pitcher's in a set. He starts his delivery, and I see Hattie going, so I know the hit and run's on. Get my leg kick. She gone! 